Good evening, brothers and sisters. Welcome to our online Bible study. Uh, tonight, we will be continuing our um, Bible study on the book of uh, Romans. And specifically, we'll be talking about Romans uh, chapter 15 uh, on filled to love one another. Uh, but before that, uh, let us open with a word of prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you and praise you that we can uh, have this time, uh, Lord, to have our Bible study, to have our care group later on, Lord. Um, we pray, Father, that you will speak to each and every one of us, Lord, as we uh, as we dig, uh, dig in deep, Lord, uh, to your word. And I pray, Father, uh, that we do not just uh, gain uh, information or knowledge, but, Lord, I pray, uh, that we gain, Lord, wisdom and transformation uh, through uh, the Holy Spirit as well. And we just want to commit to you this time. Bless our, uh, bless our time to study your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we will be tackling uh, Romans chapter 15. Uh, specifically, we'll be having three parts for this. Uh, the first part is uh, on the continuation of our um, study uh, last week on the case of the grace from our sister Hannah, uh, which is uh, verses 1 to 13. The second part is Paul the minister to the Gentiles, which is uh, from verses 14 to 22. And then lastly, Paul's plan to visit Rome. Uh, so we'll be starting from verses 1 to 13. We'll be reading from verses 1 to 3. We who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Each of us should please our neighbors for their good to build them up. So the first part of this verse, uh, verses 1 to 2, is on uh, the verse of the strong. For those who are strong, Paul calls us, or calls them, to not use their own strength for their own well-being, or just for the sake of them to boast to themselves that they are good. Instead, what does Paul tell them? If you have strength, you help the weak. You don't boast it to them. You don't, um, you don't puff it in their faces that you are strong. If you see a person failing, help them out. If you see a person who is weak, help them out. And our first application point, actually, this is very important. No? That for us who are strong, for those who are strong, do not be self-righteous. This is also in the case of our conversations last week on gray areas. If you think you are right, do not be self-righteous. Do not be selfish as well. But use your strength to help out your, your brother. Because we ought to remember that we are a body. That we are a family. Okay? So we cannot live um, like the world. Our uh, our faith has given us um, righteousness in Christ, and this is not something that we boast in ourselves, but only we boast in Jesus Christ. And more importantly, as we dive into this application point, is that um, we can help the weak more specifically when we have fellowship, when we have uh, when we have coffee time downstairs, if people open up to us. But more importantly, later on tonight, if there are people who are uh, in need of help, who are weak, and if you have the strength, our care groups, no, this is a very important place for us to also help out uh, those who are weak. And this is not just for the care group leaders or the care group assistants, but this is for all of us. All of us who are strong in such areas, we can help out the weak. This is a good practice that we can do in our care groups. So in verse 2, it says there, please his neighbor. To please your neighbor, Paul calls us to put your neighbor first. And he calls us to please our neighbor, but only for his own good. Okay? Only for his own good. Not to be a man pleaser, but only for his own good. And this call of Paul is not something new. Okay? In uh, in Philippians, the book that we studied uh, a couple of months ago or uh, during the pandemic, we also discussed uh, this as we put our neighbor first. It's in Philippians 2, 3-4. It says there that let nothing 
be done through selfish ambition or conceit. As we are talking about a while ago, about self-righteousness, about being strong. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. So this is where Paul is calling us as we uh, as we start this uh, uh, Bible study in verses 1 to 2. Help out those who are weak. Do not just look out for your own self. Don't just look out for your own interest, but also look out for the others. Because there are people who are in need. There are, are people who need your help. Okay? Let's now move to verses 3 to 4. It says here, For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. So in this uh, in this passage, um, Paul is calling us that in uh, in the sake of the strong helping the poor, let Christ be your example. Because he did not flaunt his strength. He did not flaunt that. He knew he was God. But he didn't have to do, um, he didn't have to call out legions of angels just to let him escape his death. He did not flaunt his strength. But he came here got the insults that were supposed to be ours. He gave, he came and saved the weak. Okay? And the scripture written here was taken from Psalm 69, 9 and how Jesus fulfilled the prophecies on taking the reproaches o yun dapat na sa atin but allowing God to vindicate him. Okay? So application point here. Sabi dun, Sabi, sabi dun in that same passage that everything that was written in Scripture was written to teach us and to give us hope. Right here in verse 4. So that through the endurance taught in the Scripture and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. And our application point is about that verse. That everything that is written from these four, four verses can be helpful to us. Everything that was written in the Bible up until this point, or even in the future, in the in the upcoming chapters of uh, the letters of Paul, diba? everything that was written was to teach us and give us hope. And I will give you an example to that. Matthew twenty two thirty nine. 39, it says, And the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So this passage is um, Jesus explaining to the people, that the first greatest commandment is to love God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. But the second is that you should love your neighbor as yourself. And actually, these first four verses gives us a very practical example and connection to this. How do we love our neighbor as ourselves? But first, let's extend, expand our neighbor list. Sino ba yung ating neighbors? It shouldn't be just those who love, honor, and respect us. That's the truth. Because if it's only those who love, honor, and respect us, that's easy. It should include the people that Paul was mentioning in these four verses. Those who are weak and those who are in need. So why am I saying that? Am I, am I, being, uh, am I adding to scripture when I say that? Actually, no. Matthew 5, 4, 46. Again, Scripture being taught to us and giving us hope. It says here in the Sermon of the Mount, Sabini, Jesus, For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. Right? So in this scripture alone, in Matthew 22, um, 39, that we should love our neighbor as ourselves, uh, as ourselves, Jesus is calling us to do that. And Paul is reminding us on how we can do it in these first four verses. That you put your neighbor first. Okay? And that neighbor can not just be the people that you love or respect you, but it should also be the people who are weak. 
So that's what scripture is teaching us in these first four verses. Verses 5 to 6, it says here, May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice, you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So in these uh, in this two verses, Paul included a prayer. So his prayer is that uh, God will give us endurance and encouragement to have the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had. So in verses 3 and 4, it says here that Christ be our example, right? And it's also in that same scripture in Philippians 2, 3 to 4 that he was calling us to put our neighbor on top of us. So what is that same attitude of mind that Paul is calling us? No? So in Philippians, actually in that same chapter, the next verses, Paul gives us that same mind or attitude. Let me read uh, verses 5 to 11. So in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So what is the mindset? What is the mindset that Paul is asking us to be like in Christ? It is the mindset of humility. It is the mindset of humility. So our application point for this part is that we should be uh, we should be in unity in making Christ our example. So Paul's prayer is that we be un- in unity in following Christ's humility. And sometimes, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of us today, we're trying to find people, mentors, books on what to on 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 what to follow or what example is correct and all of these things. We we should not look so far ahead of ourselves because Christ is our example and should be our example. So we ought to follow the example of Christ in his humility. Okay, now let's move to verses 7 to 12. It says here, Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the Jews on behalf of God's truth, so that the promises made to the patriarchs might be confirmed. And moreover, that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing the praises of your name. Again it says, Rejoice, you Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, that all the people extol him. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise over the nations. In him, the Gentiles will hope. So to close, um, to close this part regarding uh, the weak and the strong, Paul encourages the believers to accept one another just as Christ has accepted us. So the the verses in uh, in seven to twelve are passages of scripture from Old Testament demonstrating that God intends that the Gentiles praise Him, that the Gentiles accept Him as Lord and Savior. But the main point of this verse is our application point right here, that we ought to learn to accept one another as Christ also had accepted us. To learn to accept one another as Christ has accepted us. And we and Paul is asking us to view it in his eyes. Now we are all co-equal. In Jesus' eyes, we are all equal. Weak, strong, Jew or Gentile, or even 
in our context today, Chinese, Filipino, Filipino, Chinese, the Lord doesn't have favoritism. And all the more in terms of accepting. May, sometimes we have a problem with this as well. Believer man yan, or unbeliever, we ought to accept them as Christ has accepted us. Kasi lahat tayo, in all honesty, we are all works in progress. Hindi pa tayo finished product. So we ought to learn to accept one another, bear with one another, with each other's struggles. Now let's move to verse 13, last part of this um, of this uh, of this part. It says here, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust him, uh, as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so Paul again. Um, puts us uh, in a prayer that um, the Lord fill us with all joy and peace as you trust in Him so that this may be an overflow by the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, this last application point is uh, uh, is something that I wanted to share to you, a concept that I've been trying to learn and practice also uh, as a believer. Uh, and it, it is the balance of being and doing in the Lord. Being and doing. We cannot be full of just doings in the Lord. Because if we just keep on doing in the Lord, we will get burnt out. But if we balance it with our being in the Lord, we will be able to um we will be able to balance it out. So our being means spending time with the Lord, having uninterrupted time with the Lord. That is our being. And our doing is in serving the Lord, uh, doing Bible studies, having fellowship, attending our care groups. So we ought to balance it so that we will be able to minister to other people. We will be able to be effective servants of the Lord. And most importantly, we will be able to do uh, this very practical part of um, of Romans chapter 15, of verses 1 to 15. Because these things are healthy. For us as believers, especially as a body, that we practice it in church. So now let's move to the second part. Romans 15, 14 to 22. Paul, the minister to the Gentiles. Let me read from verses 14 to 16. Uh, Paul says, I myself am convinced, my brothers and sisters, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with knowledge, and competent to instruct one another. Yet I have written to you quite boldly on some points to remind you of them again because of the grace God gave me to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles. He gave me the priestly duty of proclaiming the gospel of God so that the Gentiles might become an offering acceptable to God, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. So in this part, um, Paul is explaining actually his ministry to them. So that so the reason. Uh, for this, for this chapter, uh, or for this book of Romans, is to remind and encourage them, because Paul was actually proud of them and very happy that they were already full of goodness, filled with knowledge, and competent to instruct one another. So they did not just know the Bible; they were actually practicing it. So the reason for this writing is to remind them and encourage them of what they had already known. But Paul said that he reminded them boldly, which we are already experiencing in these um, in these uh, chapters. Paul reiterates to them that he is the minister. Uh, he is the minister of Jesus to the Gentiles, and he is using actually priestly language to explain his rules. He serves as a ministering priest of Jesus, uh, representing the gospel as a priestly service. So Gentile converts would be an acceptable sacrifice to the Lord. So yun yung conversation that Paul uh, is using in this uh, in this chapter. So my question for all of you is that do you guys know that uh, do you guys know uh, or uh, or is God calling you, you know, to share the gospel to someone today? You know maybe it's someone uh, near you, a family member, a friend. Maybe it's a uh, a person far away from you that you still do not know. But um, rest assured that God is calling us to really share the gospel. That is, a, that is a command that he gives to us, and it's not something that we should shy away. The only question is, to whom 
is God calling you to share that gospel today? For Paul, it was the Gentiles at this time of uh, at this time of his writing. But for us, to whom will it be? To whom should we share the gospel to? Is it a group of people? Is it the people close to us? Let us pray about that as well. And do not forget to share the gospel to other people. Let's move to verses 17 to 19. It says here, Therefore I glory in Christ Jesus in my service to God. I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me in leading the Gentiles to obey uh, God by what I have said and done. By the power of signs and wonders, through the power of the Holy Spirit of God. So from Jerusalem all the way around to Illyricum, I have uh, fully proclaimed the gospel of Christ. So Paul, uh, in this part uh, of uh, Romans 15, acknowledges that it is only through the Lord that he is able to minister to the Gentiles. Only through the Lord. Only through the Lord. Only through the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul is humble enough to accept that he will not get any of the glory here. So in verse 19, he mentions that uh, places that are actually far away from each other, that in these places, I have fully proclaimed the gospel of Christ. Verse 20 uh, to 22, it says here, It has always been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ was not known, so that I would not be building on someone else's foundation. Rather, as it is written, those who were not told about him will see, and those who have not heard will understand. This is why I have often been hit, hindered from coming to you. So, um, so in this, uh, in this, in this part of uh, of Romans fifteen, Paul mentions that it is his desire to not just build on someone else's foundation. His desire was for the gospel to be reached to the ends of the earth. That's his desire. His desire was to preach, preach, and preach, share that gospel. And Paul was honest enough to tell them that this is the reason why I cannot go to you. The reason why I cannot go to you is because you are reached. But I am going to the people who are unreached. Okay? So Paul makes that very clear to the uh, to the church in Rome, and he's also I'm sure he's also telling this in all honesty so that they will not you know get hurt or maybe miss out. The parang why is Paul not coming to our place? Is there something wrong with us? So actually, Paul is encouraging them that you uh, are practicing already. I need to remind you, but for right now, my desire is to share the gospel to other people. And there is still a lot more who are unreached. So the last part, Paul's plan to visit Rome. Verses 23 to 32. But now that there is no more place for me to work in these regions, and since I have been longing for many years to visit you, I plan to do so when I go to Spain. I hope to see you while passing through and to have uh, you assist me on my journey there after I have enjoyed your company for a while. So in this time, no, Paul is telling them, I have a plan uh, to, to visit Rome uh, on a future trip to Spain where Paul will preach the gospel. So he plans to stop there along, the, along his way and he hopes that he can enjoy the support of the, uh, of the Roman church uh, before he goes to preach the gospel. So verses 25 to 29. Now, however, I am on my way to Jerusalem in the service of the Lord's people there. For Macedonia and Achaia uh, were pleased to make a contribution for the poor among the Lord's people in Jerusalem. They were pleased to do it, and indeed they owe it to them. For if the Gentiles have shared in the Jewish spiritual blessings, they owe it to the Jews to share with them their material blessings. So after I have completed this task and have made sure uh, that they have received this contribution, I will go to Spain and visit you on the way. Uh, I know that when I come to you, I will come in the full measure of the blessing of Christ. So here in this part, actually, it's actually the first part or one of the few times that in this, in this book, Paul is actually telling them 
um his plan or where he is uh, as of this moment because for the past few uh chapters we've been talking about doctrines or practical uh, applications as uh, what Paul was sharing to this church so his current plans today is um he was going to be delivering a contribution from Christians in Macedon- Macedonia and Achaia so um the G- G- so the gentile christians had received so much spiritual blessings from the jewish christians na it was only proper for them that they helped the jerusalem christians who had their own needs so makita natin in this part of of uh, romans chapter 15 that the verse, verses 1 to 4 was being uh, practiced so it practiced in the sense of uh, two different church groups now there are people who are weak here, who are in need here in Jerusalem. So the Gentile Christians um, had a collection, had a contribution, and now Paul will give it to them uh, in 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 and along the way. So that's uh, one practical way uh, for them to be helping uh, them out. So the last part of Romans 15 in verses 30 to 33. So I urge you, brothers and sisters, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit to join me in my struggle by praying to God for me. Pray that I may be kept safe from the unbelievers in Judea and that the contribution I take to Jerusalem may be favorably received uh, by the Lord's people there. So that I may come to you uh, with joy by God's will and in your company be refreshed. The God of peace be with you all. Amen. So Paul, uh, in this last part of Romans 15, is asking for prayers. Because Paul knew um, Paul knew two things. So the first one is about the, the church in Jerusalem. He knew that the church in Jerusalem was conservative. And sometimes Paul is considered a progressive, no? the innovator. Siya. In a sense, na hopefully, he's asking that this service of the church in the Gentile Will be received by Jerusalem in a uh, in a way uh, in a way that is well mannered, nothing uh, nothing out of spite or anything else. And praying and the second prayer that Paul is asking them is that he needed prayers to see him through the difficulty, because he is uh, he's already being warned uh, during this time. Actually, actually, a lot of times in the book of Acts that when you go through this path, there will be a lot of people who are going to be against you. And the people who will be against you are those are the people who will uh, who are not yet believers. So this is uh, the prayer of Paul uh, in verses thirty to thirty three. And uh, as we close, I just want to uh, tell you also the ending of this uh, of this prayer. So in conclusion, for those who do not know yet, Paul was not able to visit the church because when he went to Rome, he was bound to jail. So the prayers of Paul and the Romans were answered, but not in the manner that they were expecting. So uh, Acts 28.15 actually confirms this. No? In Acts 28.15, the brothers and sisters there had heard that we were coming, and they traveled as far as the Forum of Appius and the three taverns to meet us. At the sight of those people, Paul thanked God and was encouraged. So there was um that the prayer was answered in a sense that they met the prayer was answered in a sense that um Paul was encouraged when he saw them, but he was not actually able to visit them uh completely so uh the final outcome was he did go to Rome, as we mentioned, yet not as a missionary on his way to Spain, as he was mentioning in uh in this part. He went to Rome as a prisoner awaiting trial before Caesar, where his desire was still there, where his desire was still being uh, put into work by the Lord, where he would preach the gospel to actually the government leaders as he was testifying to them of what was happening in his life or what had happened in his life. And so our last application point is uh, this is actually for all of us. When it comes to God's work, when it comes to even our personal lives, um, when it comes to our own plans, let us learn to fully submit to the Lord. Because at the end of the day, He has your best interest in His heart. Paul's desire, even when he was um, being bound to jail, 
was still to share the gospel to the Gentiles. And so in this part of him going to Rome, it was not, again, to encourage them because that was uh, that was put into, uh, into, into the side because he went to jail. But he was there to testify um, to the government leaders of his faith. And um, this was still uh, the Lord's uh, intention in Paul's life. And I would also like to share this verse that this actually also was written by uh, Paul in uh, Romans 8.28. It says here, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And uh, as I share this part of uh, Romans 8.28, um, we can imagine ourselves uh, in, in Paul's shoes. Um, will, will we think that God is unfair? Would we think that um, God is um, being um unfair to Paul, uh, to himself as well, uh, in in what he was doing. And a lot of times we might say, yes, you know, but Paul was just planning a, a, a missionary trip to just visit the church. Is that not uh, something that was uh, actually good? Actually, it was good. But for the Lord, it was best that Paul um, Paul go to um, to Rome uh, to testify to actually the government leaders. And that's for all of us today. If we were in Paul's shoes, as I was mentioning, we would we be okay? And if our plans in our current life today change, if God reroutes us into other places where he is calling us to have his best interests, will we be okay? And I pray that for all of us, we learn to fully submit to his calling and to his leading. So the resources of our um, Bible study for tonight is uh, the David Guzik Enduring Word and the Life Application Bible. Brothers and sisters, uh, good evening. And that is our um, Bible study for uh, tonight. Let us pray. Uh, Lord, Heavenly Father, as we as we close this Bible study, we'd just like to thank you and praise you that we can have um have this time to study your word, not just for the information or the knowledge where Paul was of his plans, uh, but even in the in in his calling to us, Lord, to transform us uh, in our relationships in church, in our being, in our doing, uh, in helping the weak and loving our neighbor. Help us, O Lord, uh, to fully submit to you, to fully submit to you wherever you are calling us. To fully submit to you if you are calling us to do something uh, that is outside of our comfort zone. To fully submit to you, Lord, if you are calling us to do something uh, that is not according to our plans. So I pray, Father, uh, that we continue to be in line with you and attuned to you in all times. And so we commit to you our conversations, our discussions in our care groups, Lord, that you will uh, bless our time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good evening, brothers and sisters. We trust you have been incredibly blessed by the Lord through our study of the Book of Romans. We invite you to join us next Friday online as we study the last chapter. This is about Paul's personal greetings and parting words. Sister Faith Ong will be our moderator. This Sunday, our speaker, Pastor David Goh, contemplates on Paul's doxology in Romans 11. Together, let us worship the Lord God and God alone. We look forward to see you. Good night and God bless.